let there be peace and love among all beings of the universe. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Namaskar, Namaskar. Welcome to Satsang. Death. We are going to speak what is death, fear of death. There are beings, bodies everywhere, under the water, under the ground, over the earth, in the air. Cannot be counted, billions, trillions of bodies, all have to die. And this death is after each body. Even after death, and this death is following this body, even after death, death will bring another body. And then again death. Thus, repeated for millions and billions of years, unless you remove this fear of death, because what's body? Earth, water, fire, air, that's all. This is the body. And these are the elements outside also. Somehow, integration has taken place of earth, water, fire, air. And then, you have to disintegrate at the time of death. So if we realize it always, understand it, these are the elements, but I am not the element. I am not this body. I am not perishable. I am imperishable Brahman then perhaps you have solved this problem once for all and you will not wear this body once again. And how to do it? First of all, when, when you have firm conviction of I, don't talk of reality. When you speak, I am this I, when you use, I am this I, and you have firm conviction of I, and this I is identified with the body, don't talk of enlightenment, freedom, or reality, or truth, or bliss, or ananda, whatsoever. It's not possible. And this I is universe, bondage. When I arises, the universe arises, the bondage arises. And when there is no I, no concept of I, that's called freedom. So how to get rid of this? concept of I. So there are various ways described in the books of knowledge, Upanishads, Sutras also. So everybody says, I am. Everybody says, I am so and so. You are so and so. He is so and so. And this is the world. No one ever questions, what am I? Where do I come from? Where do I return to? What is the purpose of my coming here? What have I done? So this question is 
never asked. Who am I is never asked. So you have to question, who am I? And then you have to search for its answer by yourself here and now. And this is going to free you and uh, another through yoga also can, you can do it just with the count of eight eight breathings inhaling exhaling just for eight times how much time it takes one minute you have sixteen breathings one minute just half a minute and you are free how during these eight inhalings or exhalings do not associate with any object and you are free you can do it here and now just for eight counts of your inhalings no association with any object and you are free. Freedom is here and now always everywhere. You have been postponing for millions of years because of vasanas. I want this, I want that. I am attached to this person and that person is very much attached to me. This is all. And this is called cycle of birth and death. And this is universe. And this is bondage. Suffering. And actually it doesn't exist. Only vasana. There's no difference between vasana and samsara. Vasana is I want this, that's all. When you don't give rise to simply I don't, I want this or that, where is samsara? Where has it gone to? So this vasana is samsara and this vasana is time. This vasana is mind, which is past. Samsara is past. Mind is past, vasna is past. So we have never looked into this presence, none soever. We have never tried it, we have never been told. No one ever taught us what is presence. We speak always of past and future. Everywhere there is a talk of past and future. Who could speak of this presence? And this presence, this present instant is called freedom, enlightenment, wisdom, bliss. And you can do it without any effort. Here and now without any effort and without stirring any thought either. No thinking and no exertion. So simple it is. And this simplicity has not been recognized. Therefore, we have to suffer endlessly. Even this suffering does not exist. As in the dream, we are attacked by robbers. Attacked by robbers and we are suffering. They are threatening us with revolvers in the hand. So we want some help. Nobody helps. 
they are quite, I am alone and there are numberless people, guns in their hand and muzzles pointed on the chest of this dreamer. What help anybody can do? So there comes a tiger, a roar of a tiger. Everybody, the robbers ran away, fear of their own death. And with the roar of the tiger, this man who was attacked by the robbers wakes up. Wakes up, you see. Now, where are the decoits? Where is the fear? Where is the tiger? Where is the suffering? In the dream, everything was there. There were robbers, fear, tiger, everything was dream visions, illusions, hallucinations. But on waking up, nothing existed, you see. Likewise, the same is the case here. There is no difference at all. So, you are all sleeping and when we dream, we must have previously slept. Before, we must have been sleeping, then in the sleep we dream. In the dream we see objects. Sleep, dream, objects. So, when we see objects, we are dreaming. When we are dreaming, we are sleeping. So, here also, when we see objects, we are dreaming and we are sleeping. Wake up. What is this wake up now? Is the roar of the tiger that made you wake up from the dream, from the sleep. Like this thing, when you want to be free. I want to be free is roar of a tiger. First of all, no one wants to be free. And this is a fact. No one wants to be free. Some here and there, they need some help. Go and join meditation retreats, go to some teachers for some help. Help to solve their problems, not for freedom. Who, who comes for freedom, first of all? We are six billion people tonight. How many are there? How many Buddhas? How many enlightened people have we produced for quite billions of years now? Because we don't want freedom. We want to enjoy. And this enjoyment, each time is taken away from us, then again we make up our mind, the desires unfulfilled are waiting and will give us next birth to enjoy the same, again not fulfilled. Whose desires are fulfilled? Not even the emperors have fulfilled their desires. Not even the kings. Nobody has fulfilled his desires. So each man thinks I will fulfill my desires and later on no one speaks of freedom at all. Some here, there, perhaps nowhere wants freedom. And this is a fact. Because he who wants freedom has to be free at the same moment when he wants to be free. Because the wave rises from the ocean, is the ocean, within the ocean, not separate. 
So when the desire for freedom arises, it arises from freedom itself, from self itself. And is the self itself. If it is an ocean, there has to be a wave not separate from the ocean itself. And in the desert, if it arises, it's a mirage. In the desert also, there are waves. People run after it to have a soothing bath, swim in that. So, that also is a river with waves, but it is not real. It was not there in the morning, neither in the evening, only for some time it is there. So, this pleasure is for some time, just in the waking state or in the dream state that you can enjoy, it's not abiding, it's not permanent, it's not eternal peace. And after having enjoyed and found peace, you want to run for something else. So it's not peace at all. Peace, once attained, you are peace itself. So when, when you run here, there, it is something else. It is sensual pleasure, not peace, not bliss. Sensual pleasure, because this is the nature of the mind. Having enjoyed one thing, it wants some something else. And then something else. And this is called samsara. So if you desire for freedom, make up your mind. If not today, maybe at the end of this life, if not next life, don't postpone it. This postponement is called samsara. Samsara means postponement. And if you stand on your toes, and decide, I want to be free. Who can stop it, first of all? Decide once for all, I have to be free, because freedom is within. And when you say, I want to be free, who speaks? Who is it that wants to be free? From where does it rise from? Even this desire, I want to be free, where does it rise from? Where does it stand? Where does it subside to? Just you have to understand this thing. You have not to go anywhere. Even you have not to desire anything, only just understand that you are not bound. I am suffering, I am bound, you have heard from someone else. It's not your experience. You find out yourself, this suffering, this death, these tensions, you have heard from someone else. It's not your experience because when you sleep, all what you have heard, all what you have read, is not there, and you are happy even in sleep, though this is ignorant state. You are happy because all that you have read, heard, experienced, and tasted, and smelled, and seen, is no more there, and you are happy. So, if you free yourself of what you have seen, smelt, heard, tasted or touched, just for one second, maybe half of the second, maybe half of the half will do. That's how 
who says? I think it is Goswami says, you see. What is I remember just now in this context. Ah, ek ghadi, I will translate. Adi ghadi, Adi se puniyad, Sangat ki je saad ki, Poet kate aparad. So he says, a poet saint of this state. He says, one instant or one second, half of the second, half of the half of the second, if you associate with a saint, a perfect teacher, perhaps your all the kalpas bondages are completely washed away and you are free. That's what Goswami Tulsidas says. <laughs> and Kabir also says the same thing, you see. He also says. Chitthir Manthir, Buddhir. He was illiterate man. Kabir was illiterate. He says that I have never touched ink on the paper, nor have I held pen in my hand. That's what he says. <laughs> that was his education. <laughs> Chitthir, Manthir, Buddhthir, Isthar Raag Sharir, Pache Pache Harpere, Kahat Kabir Kabir. So he says, how I translate, Do not stir a thought in your mind. Keep your intellect quiet. Chitthir, Manthir, mind also quiet. Senses also quiet. And then enlightenment itself will be calling you from behind enlightenment itself will be inviting you from behind, Oh Kabir, wait, I am following you. <laughs> that is how it happened. So don't stir a thought, single thought. Don't discriminate between this and that. And no mentation. And one second, half second, half of the half. <laughs> How could it be difficult? No? <laughs> it is difficult for those who are yet attached to something more precious than their own self, more precious, more beautiful. more worth acquiring than your own wisdom, than self, than eternity, than bliss. Therefore, how can they ask for freedom? So he who wants, whatever he wants, he is drawn by that particular object, you see. So wherever your attachment is, Wherever the object of your attachment is, there you are. Doesn't matter where are you are. You may be in satsang. You may be in satsang, but 
truly speaking, you are where your most dear thing is is present. Maybe New York or Paris or anywhere else, you see. We just see a split second, you see. We can't keep quiet even in satsang. We can't collect the mind first and listen. One instruction of a teacher is quite enough to a devout student. A devout student, true seeker and a perfect teacher and this desire of the student to be free and the teacher's desire to make him free have to bed instantly. No postponement should be there. Something wrong somewhere. <laughs> we have to see. We have to see who is wrong. Either the teacher is fake, false or my desire is not yet hundred percent true to be free. We can just look into it ourselves. You see. We can just see where my mind is. Do I really want, I want to be free. We can find out, you see. The most dearest of the dear thing is the place <laughs> where you always are. You will dream there and in the waking state also you are there, you see. This is how it is, how it happens. But once you are, you have decided to be free, no one can stop it, you see. You may be working somewhere, active in life, but it is the mind that is most important. If the mind itself surrenders, then all is done. You, see. you are where your thought is, you are where your mind is, you see, first of all. As a woman, is in love with the neighbor. A woman is in love with, it's a story, but I tell you the true love. For that reason, this is the best love, I tell you. <coughs> neighbor, a wife is in love with the neighbor. So she is doing all the service to her husband, children going to school, looking after, so that her husband doesn't smell anything. More than a wife, she is true to this man, so that he has no doubt about it, no. Looking after his children, husband is very happy, he is getting absolutely better attention from the wife. But inside, does he live in the house? No. He is in the next house. Whenever there is a chance, she jumps the wall to see her beloved. Like this we must live in the world. We may be in this, in this world. Let us love our partners where we live very beautifully as this woman has done it. Look after our children, they will be looked after very well, but let us have love with the neighbor <laughs> which is seated inside us, you see. There's no problem, you see. And this is the best love, you see, that you can do. Everybody will be happy. After all, we need attention. Give best attention as good as possible to the world. That's all the world needs out of you. Children need service, do it. 
your partners need attention, give them. Slip away when there is a time, one instant in life, one instant. Find a chance, surely your husband is going to sleep sometime, slip away. <laughs> one instant, surely you can steal and that is quite enough quite enough to have this sight, glimpse of your beloved because this beloved is very beautiful, very beautiful, the most beautiful and hiding, hiding just behind the breath, that's all. You're not to do anything. <laughs> He is hiding, you see. So you can just slip away from the world one instant of time, half instant of time, it's enough. And you are not going to return. <laughs> you are never going to, no one has returned because the intention which took you there, the mind took you there, mind returned back. Intellect returned back. Senses became dumb and numb. <laughs> so, no return. And this is your home. This is your home. It has been your home. You forgot it. You went to shopping complex and forgot your apartment and the gate will be closed of the shopping centre, perhaps, and you do not know the address. And you have to wait for your luck, that's all. <laughs> luck or misluck. <laughs> oh, Chanti.